never asked for this. while some local newscaster tells us that today we had 15 homicides and 63 violent crimes, as if that's the way it's supposed to be. We know things are bad, worse than bad. They're crazy. It's like everything everywhere is going crazy, so we don't go out anymore. We sit in the house, and slowly the world we're living in is getting smaller, and all we say is, please, at least leave us alone in our living rooms. Let me have my toaster and my TV and my steel-belted radios, and I won't say anything. Just leave us alone. Well, I'm not going to leave you alone. I want you to get mad! get mad. You've got to say, I'm a human being. God damn it. My life has value. You might want to ask yourself why the entire culture is utterly saturated with mass media entertainment from all sides. While the educational system in America continues its stupefying downward slide. Like our other organs, the brain has evolved, increasing over millions of years in complexity and information content. Its structure reflects all the stages through which it has passed. The brain has evolved from the inside out. Deep inside is the oldest part, the so-called brain stem. It conducts many of the basic biological functions, including the rhythms of life, like uh, heartbeat and respiration. The higher functions of the brain have evolved in three successive stages, according to a provocative insight by the American biologist Paul McLean. You see, capping the brain stem is the so-called R complex, R for reptile. It's the seat of 
aggression, ritual, territoriality, and social hierarchies. It evolved to some hundreds of millions of years ago in our reptilian ancestors. So deep inside our brain is something rather like the brain of a crocodile. That was Charlie Sheehan ranting like a lunatic about the September 11th attacks. Now word comes. Hey, you want to know what Shut I was up. doing? Shut up. Oh, please don't respect. Respect. That is respect. Why did you have to tell him you were an atheist if you didn't have any trouble reading the yellows? Why didn't you just shut up? What Jimmy Carter should do is privately give Mr. Bush's opinion and shut up publicly. That would be best for the country. And it is so our duty as loyal Americans to shut up. Once the fighting begins, once the war against Saddam begins, we expect every American to support our military, and if they can't do that, to shut up. All he's got in six and a half years is that I misspoke, that I labeled a polk award a Peabody. He writes it in his book, he tries to make me out of no, 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 hey, that's shut a- up! that this one has a slightly longer brain case. Most scientists believe that these are two separate species and there wasn't much interaction between the two. But now we know there was interbreeding and that all non-Africans living today are part Neanderthal.
Let's go back to your child. Let's go back to your child. Let's go back to your child. Let me warn you, and let me warn the nation against the smooth evasion that says, of course, we believe these things. We believe in social security. We believe in work for the unemployed. We believe in saving homes. Cross our hearts and hope to die. We believe in all these things. But we do not like the way the present administration is doing them. Just turn them over to us. We will do all of them. We will do more of them. We will do them better. And most important of all, the doing of them will not cost anybody anything. Painful results physiologically and morally. Mr. Hutchley, here are you are saying you think that these various enemies of freedom are pushing us toward a real life brave new world and you say that it's awaiting us just around the corner. First of all, can you detail for us what life in this brave new world that you fear so much? Or what life might be like? So first of all, I think it's kind of the dictatorship of the future. I think there's a very unlike of the dictatorship which we've been familiar with in the immediate past. And Put another book prophesying the future, uh, which is a very remarkable book, uh, George Orwell, 1984. But this book was written at the height of the Stalinist regime and just after the Hitler regime. And there he foresaw a dictatorship using entirely the methods of terror, the methods of physical violence. Now, I, I think that what is going to happen in the future is that dictators will find, as the old saying goes, that you can do everything with them except sit on them. But if you want to preserve your power indefinitely, you have to take the consent of these rules. And this they will do, partly by drugs, as I foresaw in very few words, partly by these new techniques of, uh, of propaganda. They will do it by bypassing the rational side of man and appealing to his subconscious, his deeper emotions, and uh, his physiology. And so making them actually love his slavery. I mean, I think this is the danger, that actually people may be in some ways happy under the new uh, regime, but they will be happy in a situation where they don't need to be happy.
If we gather together in solidarity to express a feeling of mass injustice, we must not lose sight of what brought us together. We write so that all people who feel wronged by the corporate forces of the world can know that we are your allies. As one people, united, we acknowledge the reality. But the future of the human race requires the cooperation of its members, that our system must protect our rights, and upon corruption of that system, it is up to the individuals to protect their own rights and those of their neighbors, that the democratic government derives its just power from the people, but corporations do not seek consent to extract wealth from the people and the earth, and that no true democracy is attainable when the process is determined by economic power. We come to you at a time when corporations which place profit over people, self-interest over justice, and oppression over equality run our governments. We have peaceably assembled here as is our right to let these facts be known. They have taken our houses through an illegal foreclosure process despite not having the original mortgage. They have taken bailouts from taxpayers with impunity and continue to give executives exorbitant bonuses. They have perpetuated their quality and discrimination in workplaces based on age, the color of one's skin, sex, gender identity, and sexual orientation. They have poisoned the food supply through negligence and undermined the farming system through monopolization. They have profited off the torture, confinement, and cruel treatment of countless animals and actively hide these practices. They have continuously sought to strip employees of the right to negotiate for better pay and safer working conditions. They have held students hostage with tens of thousands of dollars of debt on education, which is itself a human right. They have consistently outsourced labor and used that outsourcing as leverage to cut workers' health care and pay. They have influenced the courts to achieve the same rights as people with none of the culpability or responsibility. They have spent millions of dollars on legal teams that look for ways to get them out of contracts in regards to health insurance. They have sold our privacy as a commodity. They have used the military and police force to prevent freedom of the press. They have deliberately declined to recall faulty products, endangering lives in pursuit of profit. They determine economic policy, despite the catastrophic failures their policies have produced and continue to produce. They have donated large sums of money to politicians who are responsible for regulating them. They continue to block alternate forms of energy to keep us dependent on oil. They continue to block generic forms of medicine that could save people's lives or provide relief in order to protect investments that have already turned to substantial profit. They have purposely covered up oil spills, accidents, faulty bookkeeping, and inactive ingredients in pursuit of profit. They purposefully kept people misinformed and fearful through their control of the media. They have accepted private contracts to murder prisoners, even when presented with serious doubts about their guilt. They have perpetuated colonialism at home and abroad. They have participated in the torture and murder of innocent civilians overseas. They continue to create weapons of mass destruction in order to receive government contracts. To the people of the world, we, the New York City General Assembly occupying Wall Street and Liberty Square, urge you to assert your power, exercise your right to peaceably assemble, occupy public space, create a process to address the problems we face, and generate solutions accessible to everyone. To all communities that take action and form groups in the spirit of direct democracy, we offer support, documentation, and all the resources at our disposal. Join us and make your voices heard.
Microcosm the world event. People, make a difference. Stop funding the rich. As a people, we are so stubbornly created. Yet, we allow such disparity in our living. It's time to stand together. Condemn feeding the rich. Beyond Wall Street, a plan is needed. To stop feeding the rich around the world. Stop spending your money. You can do something. Boycott. Gas. Shopping. And big business. For three days. Can you imagine what the major corporations and Wall Street and what could be achieved with just three days of global non-compliance? Three days of global non-compliance by the people would cause a domino effect and hit the wealthy where it hurts their pocket. Get yourself a supply of food for three days. Don't go out and be a consumer for three days. Don't watch TV for three days. Don't buy any gas for three days. Don't buy alcohol or go shopping for three days. Just do enough to keep the essential services operating. The only power that the ruling elite have over the people of the world is the power we ourselves grant. All that is needed to fix it and stop them in their tracks is for the people of the world to stand united in an act of non-violent, non-compliance. The depression that is creeping across our world must be dealt with by the people and dealt with very quickly. A unity of human spirit in an attitude of global non-violence Non-compliance is all that is required to win the battle and it needs to be done quickly. While the people still have the opportunity to deal with the situation in a peaceful manner. Make a choice. Make a choice. Make a choice. Will you be consumed by the rich and greedy? Or not?